two fellas hop in the pickup and travel the country hunting white-tailed deer. This is Buck Truck. Down here in Texas, deer hunting is all high fences and corn feeders. <laughs> Actually, the Lone Star State is bigger than most countries, and we do have a little bit of public land to chase these bucks around on. We invited our friend Mark Kenyon from Weird to Hunt, I mean Wired to Hunt, to come experience some late rut action and the flavors of our home state. Up, How are you? Good, good, good. 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 Man, you skinny. So, Mark, how much Spanish do you know? You guys are just as crazy in person as you <laughs> see them online. <laughs> oh, it's actually worse. Uh, so just be ready. I feel like I got like the the low key version, hanging out with Eric and Tyler, going fishing <laughs> yeah. and all that kind I'm of stuff. I'm way less appropriate than these. I guys think are. I think Casey really throws the the wrench into things for you guys. I bet you two would be two upstanding individuals. Yeah. Yeah. If it was just you two. We're 66 percent. Uh, as, yeah, as for yeah, Espanol, Casey, yes, uh, un poco. Un poco. You're poor? <laughs> uh, isn't, po isn't poco small? <laughs> poco can be small. Poquito is small. Uh, poco smaller. means poor. Are you sure? Uh, Poquito is little. It depends. So you probably learned Spanish in school. Yeah. Yeah. And school Spanish is different than Texas Real Spanish. Spanish. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's so wild. I, I mean, like, you step foot off that airplane. Yeah. It's like a different country. Yeah. Like no, I, like all I heard was Spanish everywhere I walked. Yeah, yeah. I, my favorite thing to do is to go to Mexican food place. Right, right here. Oh gosh! <laughs> there it goes. It's right oh, there's here. I see the the truck. Yeah. The boys are here. <clears throat> cool. They actually have um, parking over here. So you can see that. Hey, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> You're such a nerd. You're such a freaking nerd. Don't worry. Don't worry. Everybody's got them. The we first. All, we all got them. <laughs> I looked at him like, that doesn't look like a shirt I remember seeing put together. <laughs> you guys are nuts. <laughs> This is one of our cameramen, Greg. He's a killer in this country, and he's gonna be in front of the lens on this trip hunting the gray ghosts of the brush and giving us some advice. Like my dream Texas scenario would be like rattling in in the scrubby brush country. That's the thing you see. Oh, yeah. but what's really cool about this, mm -hmm. like not, no knock against other Texan ways of hunting, but I like the idea that we could possibly do that on public land. Yeah, yeah. It feels a little different than what you usually see, but if I could still get that experience, like see them kind of coming through the nasty brush, yeah. like that kind of ghost gray mm -hmm. color. So for someone, if, if you were trying to pitch me and my buddies on why they should come down here, like what's the sell? The more you pay, the bigger the buck is. <laughs> okay, but we're not I was paying. thinking uh, food and good weather and yeah, lots of deer. Yeah. Lots of deer. You can shoot five deer. And a rut that's out of the traditional. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're literally rutting right now. It's probably snowing where you're at. You yeah. know what I mean? Good places are going to be over a mile. Long Walk. strides can do that in no time. Yeah, it'll be it's, <laughs> it's pretty easy walking. Yeah. It's not like. Seven minutes. It's not too bad. I just usually leave the truck in a t shirt and put all my clothes on when I get there. It's kind of weird doing the Winnie the Pooh look, but hey, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Kicking off the hunt here in Texas, and I've yet to lay eyes on what this landscape looks like. I think it's pretty hard to really 
really figure out like where this real bedding, that kind of stuff, especially having zero experience in this kind of habitat at all. But one thing that I do think translates from location to location are terrain features and funnels. That's the rut out here right now. So these bucks should be cruising around. Once it gets a little bit more daylight and I can glass and make sure there's nothing down beneath me. I think I'm gonna kind of slowly slip my way down towards those saddles. That's what I got. It might be a knuckleheaded move, but it's it's a move. I'm thinking there's a hot toe down in this little draw. Cause there's a little buck to stand the hillside I'm looking down at this draw. And I just saw a big buck go walking in there. And then what I think is maybe a secondary, the sure look like darker horns. Head in the same place too. This is nuts. <laughs> some deer in the backyard man dude this is a wild place it's cool i think i smell one out there mm, very good dude i love these yellow ones mm. Mm. Woo -hoo! is that where the meat's at oh ah! you open the shed no Whoa. wild peppers Wild peppers? Yeah. I found these when I used to work in South Texas. And I was like, this was dumb, but I tasted it without knowing what it was. Mm -hmm. Don't ever do that. No, <laughs> but I, then you I don't looked, have to worry about me. But, <laughs> but it tasted like a pepper, and I was like, here, taste that. Just a little bit, though. They're pretty hot. They're hotter than a jalapeno. Woo! Woo! Yeah. I just oh touched it to my tongue. Dude, me too. Yeah, we're gonna put this in Mark Kenyon's also not telling. <laughs> <laughs>
So I slipped all the way in back to where I'd seen that big buck drop in the hole. We're sitting here watching that deer for a while, waiting, trying to figure out how to make a move on him. And then a doe steps out like seven yards in front of me. Just kind of walks across in front. Behind brush. I watch her kind of move off. And in my head, I'm thinking, well, I'm listening, trying to hear if I can hear another buck or if the buck behind that doe or something. And in my head, I'm thinking, you better get an arrow knocked just in case. And like, just as I'm thinking that, here comes that big buck. Walks right in front of me, like seven, eight yards away. Ten pointers now bedded across the way. Walking up with a buck. He was coming straight at me from over here, and I don't know why he didn't just keep coming and get into this gap, but he stopped and just kind of started angling out to get my wind. That's scrubby. Down here, this is filled with deer that are bedding up in this stuff. And I? And they coming around the lake. They usually come from the northeast. <laughs> I took a swing at one at like, not swing, like I had to shoot at one, but made a stock on one at like noon. So I'd go to sleep now, I'd be like, that was a dang good day. Okay, yeah. you're at the airport right now, you're happy. <laughs> <laughs> are you uh, Are you thinking about coming, going back in the other for the afternoon? Yeah. Is it, the wind works out fine? Uh, well, I'm not, I won't be able to go to the exact same spot, oh, but I, want, I don't know what the wind's going to be doing this evening, I guess. I think it's going to be pretty much northwest the rest of the day. Yeah. So. Hmm. Fun morning. Yeah. That's awesome. Super fun. Glad That's you, cool, dude. Glad you saw some stuff, man. I'm going to grab some camo. Yeah. And, I guess we're going to go do some boot scouting. I don't know, dude. This is legit. Yeah, I like it. Yesterday morning, I had a good encounter with a pretty good buck. The wind is good for that spot, but I kind of want to give that spot a break for a few days because he, he did spook. So we're going to try to do some run and gun on the ground type stuff and um, find where the deer at and go find a rut fest.
concept. I mean, he was 43 yards. Stopped right underneath that tree. And I just, I didn't want to take that long a shot on these really small body deer, too. If he would have come, you know, another five, ten yards would have been game over, but he just got up and crossed that point. Words of Tyler and Casey, Dad, coming. That was fun. <laughs> I walked through here this morning. Wow. No idea what the footage looks like. I just killed a buck. Called him in. And I was just walking back. I mean, I'm, I'm literally just walking back to get my stuff. He dropped straight in his tracks. I'm gonna go drag him into the shade because it's, it's getting pretty warm right now. Drag him in the shade. I'm gonna go get the other guys and uh, pack this buck out. Yeah. What? You, you feel, I feel like you've got something to tell. No, not that good. Actually. No, but but you saw. You did see one. Saw almost almost got shot. We were like ten yards away. We all set up. Yeah. I do so this seen. was different buck. There's three different draws that come down, and their hub is right here. And um, this buck comes down the pipe right here. Shooter, maybe three and a half year old. In like the bottom? yeah, in the bottom. Wide, dark, chocolate, chocolate antler eight. Not as big as the other two, but still nice. He got to 43 yards, stopped, and then turned and hopped this point to get to that side. Mm -hmm. And never, and I wasn't going to take a 43, 44 yard shot on these little deer. Mm -hmm. I just said he's bigger than what you. Oh no, no, he's 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 a 2.5. Okay. He's not a giant. No, oh, I'm happy to shoot him on public. So. Yeah. I'm happy you did too. Okay. 
Wow, it's way more nasty than I expected. Yeah, he's pretty heavy for a two. Yeah, he is. Dude, that's, that's cool, cool man. Smoking. Yeah. Where are you sitting? I was, uh, let's see where I shot him. Oh, I see blood down there. Yeah. That's cool. That is cool, man. Right here? Were you standing? Yeah. I had the, had the sun behind me. They bumped out of here. I saw his doe run across through there. And uh, as soon as I saw her, I just threw a grunt call out. And I saw a rack back here. And he followed her for a little bit, then her grunt. And then uh, all of a sudden he just came trotting straight down this trail. I love the, like the coloration is like, man, just, you see a lot of deer and, in this area like that. And You're I called him in. Dark, you know? I couldn't pass him because I called him in. That was, that was cool. And yeah, dude. Well, that's dude, that's so sweet for. to me. Way to go, man. Yeah, here's what that. I ain't going, dude. Yeah, I'm shooting that for sure. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think that deer weighs? 85 pounds. Not even, maybe. I bet you he's right at 100. He don't look too tiny. No. I think it's a cool thing you did, man, you know? Come way back here by yourself, self-film, and uh, kill a nice buck on public land, and then you're about to just pack this dude out. Like, it doesn't... As far as just like, it's not a very white tail thing to do. No, it's not. And it's like, as far as things that we need in life, right? Like food's a big one, right? And to come out here and like work that hard for some food that you will enjoy and, and use, man, like <laughs> to me, that's about as cool as it gets, you know? That's as, as rewarding as it gets. It is, dude. So. Like you, I don't, there's something about deer meat that you cook in a stir fry or whatever that is just when you eat it you could cook the same thing out of beef in the same way and it tastes the same or as good or better or whatever even maybe but like you appreciate and think that that's the best tasting thing you've ever made just because of what, mm -hmm. what it took to get that meat you know real if you need help anyway. it shouldn't be too bad uh thank you This was a slow morning. You string enough of these together and a feller starts to go crazy. In fact, Mark thinks he saw a monkey. I saw something last night that I couldn't figure out what it was. First, that was a porcupine. Then probably that was a monkey. Hunting tactics and strategies start to get replaced with practical jokes. <laughs> What'd you truck? do with it? <laughs> What'd you do with the truck? And silly songs, which typically boost morale. And the buzzer flies a bird, Tyler's deer. <laughs> Put it all on the cliff edge of Ciudad de Cunha. We used that morale boost to inspire us to walk way in deep where KC got into some dog chola. Uh, grab one of the big ones. Oh, is that a mosquito? and I got into a big buck. Oh, 
probably 100 yards away. Cruising. And by the time I got a call to him, I couldn't really tell what he's doing. And that, that frustrated me. Yeah. So I could have seen him with the naked eye and known he was a buck. But I didn't know that at first because he's going through brush. And so I pulled my binos up and they were super blurry. So I was like, trying to adjust them. If I had been able to just know that I was gonna, he was a buck right off the bat, and I could have called to him and seen like what his demeanor was, you know, so. All these small deer out here, these are my rattling antlers. <laughs> Don't fight me, <laughs> uh, Okay. Spot and stalk whitetail hunting is hard enough. You pair that with the rocks, the cactus, and no wind, and it is destined for failure. However, a change of weather is in the forecast. Get in there. <laughs> We're clinching everything. <laughs> we just dropped off KC. He and Greg are going in to try to find a deer same general area that Greg was in when he shot his, but I think they're moving quite a ways away to another spot that Greg has liked before. It's a windy day. The, the front has come, come in, if you can't tell. It's freezing cold. All these Texans are freaking out, trying to stay warm, and we're going to use that wind to our advantage by being able to kind of stalk perpendicular to the wind and work against the grain of deer or bucks that might be cruising back towards us on a perpendicular wind, uh, smelling no bedding. These busted four does right up here. It's a good sign, they're bedding on this side.
So I'm gonna give I'm gonna go up here and give that book a try. See if I can get it close. over you know and uh, I was like oh we're gonna work our way back against the grain box will be working into the wind right we get up here and we start talking about how good this year's been this season's been awesome we've done so many cool things and we started reminiscing and then we just kind of like all right here you go and uh, just kind of mindlessly started walking we opened up to all this stuff down here and this good little bowl where we saw some action the other day and I thought thought about glassing it, but I didn't. Because I was just like, man, ain't nothing in there I can see with my eyes. Well, of course, these deer blend in with the landscape better than you could ever imagine. We just picked a buck and two does right there. And he was a solid buck, like probably a 14 inch wide buck. <sighs> this is tough, tough country. Tough country makes for tough men. We've seen this in the people that fought to found this state, such as Austin, Houston, Crockett, Lamar, Travis, Bowie, and many more. This land was worth fighting for and still is, just like our privilege and ability to hunt it and feed ourselves with the animals we take. 